every crime against humanity, every genocide, every unspeakable act of oppression and tyranny, every act of terrorism, every starving nation ignored, every drop of martyred blood, every orphan and widow abandoned, every stranger in need passed by, every deviant and perverse lifestyle, every marriage torn asunder, every word uttered in hate, every injustice, every theft, every grudge, every bitterness, every lust, every fear, every lie, every doubt, every one. Oh, the weight of the cross. Oh, the strength of the one who bears it. Dear brethren of Bethel Temple, on behalf of my wife and myself, we greet you in the precious name of Jesus. We would like to let you know that you are in our prayers. We are asking God for his blessing and his protection upon your life. We want to let you know that we miss you very much. It is our desire that God would one day allow us to come together so that we may worship and praise his name as a body of Christ that we are. Till then, we thank you for joining us online. We thank you for participating on the online services. We're praying that God would edify you through his word, through the online preaching. We also want to let you know that if there's a need that you're going through, please call us. My wife or myself would be more than happy to pray with you over the phone, would be able to maybe make some uh, need uh, of product arrive to your home. My wife has uh, secured some products, and she's willing to assist if she can. So we're here for you. We love you. We appreciate you, and we miss you very much. And we are waiting on the day we can see us, see you here together. May God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord, brethren. Welcome to our online service. We're glad that you joined us to worship and magnify the name of Jesus. Well, I can't say together because you're at home and I'm here, but we can together worship the Lord. So sit down with your family or stand up and, and, and worship God. Lift up your hands and magnify God because God is in all places. So let us pray. Father, we come before you to come and worship and magnify your holy name, Lord, that your spirit would just reach the homes of your church, Lord, as we worship you and praise you in spirit and in truth. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us worship God. La oscuridad no prevalecerá Porque el Dios que sirvo siempre triunfará Mi Dios no fallará Y mi Dios no fallará La batalla es tuya, Señor. Voy a ver la victoria, voy a ver la victoria. La batalla es tuya, Señor. Oh, oh, oh. 
forsake us, oh God. Oh. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. Dear brethren and friends, I greet you in the wonderful peace of Christ. We want to thank you for spending time with us in our devotional service today. It is our prayer and our desire that your life would be blessed and edified through the wonderful Word of God. I wish to thank all those who are offering their prayers on our behalf. As you know, we, we also work in a hospital your concern for us is felt and, and appreciated. And I would also ask that you would please pray for all the health care workers in all the hospitals. Uh, we need to be healthy to be able to go to work and to attend to those who are sick. If the health care workers were to get sick, it becomes very challenging and difficult for nurses and doctors and workers to attend those who, who need us at this crucial time in their life. So I would appreciate that you would please hold all the healthcare workers and all those working in essential jobs, that you would please hold them in prayer and that you would ask for God's favor upon our life. At this time, let us meditate in the Word of God. I'd like to take you to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5. And this will be our base verse for today. And the Word of God reads in the following manner. It says, That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. We need faith in these trying times. And our faith needs to stand in the power of God. I'd like to title this message with the title, Your Faith will sustain you in difficult times. Your faith 
will sustain you in difficult times. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence right now. We thank you, Lord, because we know you're still with us. We know that you love us, God, and you're in control. There's a lot of panic, a lot of confusion, Lord, but we thank you for the peace that your spirit gives us. We are concerned, yes, but we are not living in fear, and we thank you for that. We ask, <clears throat> we ask that you would impart this faith, Lord, to those who are hearing us right now if they find themselves in fear, that you would give them faith to trust in you and believe that you have care for them. Lord, bless our lives. We commit ourselves to you. We trust in you, Lord, and we are waiting upon your direction for all things. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5. It says that we need to stand, that our faith needs to stand in God. So it presents two foundations, the wisdom of man and God. When we look at human wisdom, we look at the natural man. The natural man solely depends on science and secular education. Now, I am not discounting science and wisdom of man. I believe that God uses that as well. But we cannot put our faith solely on that. We cannot just trust in science. The, not, the spiritual man needs to go further. There's a lot of people who believe in science and they're panicking. There's a lot of people who believe in science and they're fearful. Why? Because they may be lacking something more concrete. A foundation that is unmovable in difficult times. That is called faith in God. When we believe and we trust in God, we have God's peace in our life. The book of Luke chapter 6 verse 48 and 49 talks about these two foundations. It talks about men building on the rock and building on the sand. Verse 48 says, they are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on the rock. When the flood came, the torrent struck that house, but could not, but could not shake it because it was well built. Verse 49, but the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed, and its destruction was complete. Speaking of our lives, what are we founded on? Are we believing, trusting, just in science? Yes, we want them to discover a cure for this. And we're praying that God would give the scientists the, the wisdom and the knowledge that they can come up with a cure. God uses them. But my faith is not in man. My faith is in God. Therefore, I can live assured that God is in control. He's got my back. Hallelujah. So where is your foundation is a good question. If you're fearful, maybe you need to change the foundation. You need to put your trust in God because when God enters a picture, he will remove the fear. So there's the foundation of the rock and then there's no foundation. We need to believe the Word of God. And it requires to believe in the Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, the Bible says, the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. There's a lot of people who think this is foolishness. How can you just trust in God? Don't you see what's going on? Don't you see what's happening? And it's kind of foolishness that we believe in God in these trying times. It's because you need to do this through your spirit. You need to let the Word of God, the Spirit of God, quicken your spirit and faith enter your spirit, enter your life so that faith can build you up and you'll have a different outlook on 
the situation. The psalmist said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. David believed in God, and though he was in difficult situations, through the shadow of the valley of death, I will fear no evil. Church, my friend, God wants to give you peace. He wants to take fear out of your life. We should live in concern, but not in fear. So how do we get faith? How do we grow in faith? The book of Romans chapter 10, verse 17, the Bible says, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. We need to hear. We need to open our hearts, our spirits, our minds, our ears to the word of God. And it is through that hearing of the word that my faith will be edified. My faith will grow. And the more my faith is edified and grows in the word of God, the more secure I will feel, the better outlook I will have on even moments of crisis. The book of Revelations 2.29, the Bible says, Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Open your ears to the Word of God. God wants to impart you faith. God wants to impart you peace. When there's faith in our hearts, it is impossible not to believe God. When there's faith in our life, you can trust in God. You can believe in God. So there's a good question. Do you believe in God or are you having difficulty believing in God? It's a matter of faith. It's a matter of the level of faith. That's why now more than ever we need to get closer to God. We need to open our ears to the Word of God so that our build, our faith will be built and we will have more peace in our life. For it is fear is the enemy of faith. Fear's objective is to assassinate your faith. Fear's objective is to kill your faith so that you will live in fear. That is not God's will for your life. In a man's spirit, if fear is present, it is a sign that faith is absent. If faith is present, it is a sign of the absence of fear. We cannot live saying, I know God and God lives in me. And at the same time, live in fear. They're not compatible. God and fear are not compatible. Either God lives in us or fear lives in us. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, the Bible says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. No one who fears is not made, the one who fears is not made perfect in love. So there is no fear in in love and the bible says that god is love and those who live in love live in god and god in them and if god lives inside of us he will drive out fear fear has no place inside the spirit of the children of god so i invite you to believe in god to have faith and trust in god let me talk a little bit about faith and trust because they're really a little bit different. A lot of people say, I believe, but they lack the trusting. The example I'd like to give is the tightrope walker. If you notice the picture, the graphic there, you notice there's a tightrope walker trying to cross a valley, a dangerous spot in which he finds himself in. And there's a man on his shoulder. Let's consider the man on his shoulder. He has to not only believe that the tightrope walker has the skill and the ability to cross the dangerous moment, the, the valley. He has to now also trust because he finds himself on his shoulder. If the man on the shoulders were on the ground safely, he could say, well, I believe he can do it. No big deal. He's unsafe on ground. No big deal, I can believe. But now that he's on the shoulder crossing the tightrope, he has to trust. Let me tell you, you can put your life on God's shoulder. 
He will carry you through. He will take you to the other side of safety. He will protect you and be with you. So we need to have faith and we need to trust in God. And then we'll have peace in our life. The book of John, verse 14, uh, chapter 14, verse 27, the Bible says, Jesus speaking, peace I, le I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. We do not have to be afraid. We don't have to let our hearts be troubled. Why? Because God gives us his peace. Peace I leave with you. So if you have faith and trust in God, in the word of God, you're going to have peace of God and it will drive out fear. You do not to you do not have to be troubled. Second Timothy verse chapter 1 verse 7. The Bible says, "For the spirit of God given us does not make us timid, does not make us afraid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline." We have not received the spirit of fear. We have received the spirit of power, of love, of self-discipline, and we trust in God in the midst of what's going on. In the midst of uncertainty, we will put our faith, our prayer, our trust in God. I have a question. And the question is, is it possible not to have fear in uncertain and difficult times? To answer that question, I invite you that we look at the first century Christians, our brethren that lived in the first century. Their faith allow, allowed them to face death death itself. Not just any death, but a painful death by torture. If they did not possess faith, fear would have caused them to deny Christ in order to save their lives from the torture. But because they had faith, because they trusted in the Word of God, they were able to even face death itself. That is amazing. I invite you in your free time to read Hebrews chapter 11, you will find the many accomplishments of men and women of faith, what they were able to overcome, what they were able to accomplish because they had faith in God. One of the things that our early brethren suffered uh, were crosses and stakes. They were crucified. Stakes were, were driven into them to torture them, to kill them because of their faith. Yet it sustained them that they were able to withstand all that. There was a lot of modes of suspension that the, the early Roman Empire would, would come up with to, to torture our brethren. But they sustained themselves believing in the promises of God. They created this great wheel where they would tie down a Christian on the wheel and throw him down a mountain, throw him down a place where his body would be just ripped apart. Their bodies were crushed and stretched, tortured. But they maintained their faith, believing in God. They were burned on a wooden horse. Pans and pots were used with oil, hot oil, to burn them and, 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 and torture them. All kinds of uses of fire were used. They were condemned to the beast. But they maintained their faith. They knew in their trial, in their moment of difficulty, in their crisis, they held their faith in God. And I believe we can do the same. We may not be going exactly through what they did, but we are going through a pandemic. We're going through uncertain times. The economy, the, the, the dire news of the economy, the dire news of this virus and its effects uh, is scaring a lot of people and we do need to be concerned we do need to uh, live with with, with uh, caution but there's difference of living with caution and concern for others but we will not live in fear we trust in God our faith is in God and God is in control he's using this to call many Many people who don't know Christ, they'll know Christ through this crisis. It is human nature to look up to God 
when they find themselves in crisis. And I believe that a lot of people are going to look towards God in these moments of crisis. And church, you and I are the light of the world. We are the salt of the world. We need to demonstrate that we're concerned. We need to demonstrate that, that we're going to live with caution. But let's also demonstrate that we are not afraid. We live with the peace of Christ. I'd like to also read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 10, and I will end with this. The Bible reads in the following manner, For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. Because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burned because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now the one who, <clears throat> excuse me, now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God who has given us the spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we are always confident. Church, we must live in confidence. We are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in, in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. Let's live by faith and trust in God, and it will drive out fear, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please Him wherever we are, at home, in the body, or away from it. Verse 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body. We're good or bad. We'll be judged what we do in the body. What we do now will we'll, we'll speak for eternity. Eternity will know. Did you believe in God? Did you trust in God? Did you put your life in and faith in God or did you not? Our faith is founded in God, not just in man's science. Again, we respect it. We pray for them. We ask that God give them knowledge and wisdom so they can come up with a cure for this virus. But my faith will remain on the solid rock. My trust will remain in God. And I invite you to do the same. If you're in panic mode, if you're in fear, open your heart. Let God in. Say, God, I need you right now. Lord, I open my spirit, I open my heart, and I ask you to come in. I don't want to live in panic and in fear. I want you to give me your peace. And God will hear your prayer. God is faithful. God is just. God is good. So just open your heart. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now. We ask that you would impart faith, Lord, as your church and our friends have heard this message. That they would open their hearts to you, Lord. And that you would come into their lives. You are faithful. You are true, Lord. We are examples. We are living proof, Lord. Without you, our lives would be a mess. Without you, our lives would be disastrous. But you came into our life. You came into our spirit, Lord, and you gave us new life. You gave us new hope, and you gave us faith, Lord, and you've driven out fear. So we ask the same for our brethren. We ask the same for our friends, Lord that they would know you in a personal, in a real way, more than religion, but in reality, more than just head knowledge, but in a real life relationship with you. Lord, bless them, Lord. Father, we ask also right now for our nation. We ask for our president, Lord. We ask for our leaders. We ask for, Lord, all the hospital health care workers all those working in essential jobs, Lord, that you would bless them, that you would protect them, that you would keep them healthy, Lord, in this time of crisis. 
Lord. Bless the scientists working for a cure to this coronavirus, Lord. We put them in your hands, Lord. We trust in you, we believe in you, and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. It was good to be with you. Until next time, may God bless you.